Nation Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast with my very good friends, Ryan Boniface, Jose Neuer. How are we, guys? Good, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm thank glad much. to hear it. Oh, Be- Bexy Evans just said uh, thank you for that, for the eight words. So just... No problem. That's a bit of pre-podcast TikToking we were doing there. If you want to get in on the action, just follow Joe, J Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation each and every week, Tuesday or Wednesday, depending when <coughs> I decide to bump the podcast to, round about six o'clock. We are on. Joe will signpost it all. Normally, it's a last minute note because I forgot I'm doing something <laughs> else, but we make it all work. Get involved there. And of course, we're on Twitter as well, at listen to IN, listen T-O-I-N, and head over to inspirationnation.org.uk for everything to do with the podcast. Right, so we all agreed last week that we really like my metaphors for who's going to do the conversation. So the talking stick of conversation is going around the powwow circle this week. <laughs> oh, powwow I forget circle. who it lands what the hell on. Is, who the hell is a powwow circle? This is it's what like I mean. You, is... you all sit and it's this it's a bit hippies, a talking stick. It's all that good sort of positive vibe energy <clears throat> going on. I like yeah. the pickle. That's just leave that there. Take that out of context. That <laughs> the, pi- the pickle Rick, that's what I like. Joe likes the pickle. It's just um I've got a feeling Ryan. a new t shirt will be heading over to inspirationnation.org.uk this very week. You know what? Oh, so no, I'll, I'll talk about it before. I won't talk about it again. It's all right now. Yeah, you carry on, Lee. Anyway, who is holding the stick this week? <laughs> Do you not know? Is it me, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it, is. it is you, Lee. It's me. You're holding the pickle. So, as you know, I know nice. he's. <laughs> He's holding the pickle. We're, we're powering through. I'm Sorry. not ticking that mature content box when this goes out. So we are just powering through everyone. Um, so this week, getting beyond that, we spent far too long rambling. We would have lost loads of listeners by now. We're not following podcast etiquette. This is all your fault, Joe. All your Sorry. fault. Come Sorry. back. Listen to us. Stick with us. Right. So I want to talk about, I think I alluded to this a little bit in one of our other conversations but about the concept of the passing of time and how that is different to different people and in different ways and what that can mean about well-being, mindfulness, planning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And my reason I'm saying this, and this, I listen to loads of different podcasts and the host of the the series ones I like to listen to is about the same age as me. So I think he hits a lot of realisations about life like I do. I've been listening to him for about five years. So as well as the content, you get snippets into people's life and stuff. And one of the things is about how time, as you get older, your concept of time gets very, very different. Um, and as an example, when I was, and I dare say even Ryan's age and younger, a year was a long time. If I had to wait a year for something or if I was paying something off over a year or saving up for something for a year that you know that was in the in the future that is not now that is a long time I would almost define that time in my life by I'm just waiting for this thing to happen because it was so long now at my ripe old age of 40 a year is nothing if I have to wait a year or save up for a year or pay off over a year this that's just a a plan that's almost going to happen in a blink of an eye now, if you like, whereas it would have been a huge thing before. And I don't know, Joe, obviously you've got decades or so on my good self. I don't know if you feel a similar thing. Joe, I th- Joe, Ryan, I don't. I looked at Ryan on my screen there as I said, Joe, I don't know how you feel on the whole, how long a year is or, or that sort of thing. But we'll go to Joe first on whether you feel a similar thing with that or whether that's something that hasn't resonated before or sparked a thought in your head yes so when i was very young and, and, and uh, you know i don't know you, you might get it when you like you tell me if you still happen to you but like you just collect these tokens and you collect tokens you send them off you get 28 day for delivery right 28 day for delivery like silly putty or a glow in the dark putty is what i used to love when i was about when I was about seven or eight it took 28 days and 28 days when i was seven eight ten years old was like um it was like so so long so for me, I agree with you. That yeah, a year now goes very, very quickly, whereas a year before would be absolutely so long. Um, so yeah, I do agree with uh, what you're saying. It's, life seems to have quicker as you get older. I'm not and sure that's, that's, the, that's the other yeah. flip side of it, I would say, is not only does waiting not take as long, but exactly like you said there is life takes longer. And I was thinking about it even like kids here and they've gone through you know school year ended school year summer holiday starting at school year and things like you know silly things like having to buy 
you know, a math set or a calculator or a new shirt. Or and it seems to come around so frequently. But when I was a kid and I was in school, a school year was the longest length of time. It just, even a term being six weeks was forever. And it <clears> seems to observe in it almost go by in a blink of an eye right now. What about summer holidays? Summer holidays. Oh, summer holidays. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, that were ages, weren't they? Yeah. That was a life. And not so much now. Um, like Monkeys joined us on TikTok, said hello, Joe. Just shout out hello back. Thank you, regular follower there. Ryan, Thanks, over monkey. to you, my good friend. I feel like things when you're younger feel like they take longer because you have less filling your time, just as, a, as an off-the-cuff observation. That um, could be very true. I feel like I'm at that midway point now where having to save up for something for a year is far too long. What can I do to get that now is where my head's at. But also when working and somebody says x thing will be delivered q4 next year i don't think that's that long you get through christmas and then it's january and you get through january and then you get through february and then it's spring and then you get eight and then you get easter and then it's summer and then it's my birthday and then it's autumn and then bam you're there but I it like doesn't that. i enjoyed the listing off of every month for an event there it, was, <clears> it, it doesn't it, 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 it just feels time. it 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 obviously living it takes does take a long time you know they it just compresses down doesn't it like this this year is nearly 10 months in and it doesn't feel like it's 10 months in but you know where you're so where all of us i think as adults are so busy that time does just just kind of fly um but yeah kind of kind of going back a little bit i think when you're younger and you have your summer holidays and all you all you're going to do is sit and play championship manager for six months six weeks sorry <laughs> of course it's going to go by incredibly slowly because you're not you're not really doing much to fill that time but for us as adults we're going to work five days a week and then we have two days of a weekend and then we go back and then there's bank holidays and um you might do stuff with your families and your kids and things like that and before you know it it's you've had your you had your week off in the summer that a lot of people take and you're back to work and that process repeats monday comes around a lot quicker than friday does so i i think i've spoken about this before and how i break down kind of my time and things like that throughout a week i don't i'm a firm believer that monday is not the worst day of the week Tuesday is Tuesday is by far the worst day of the week because you you anticipate Monday is going to be so bad so therefore you make it out to be worse than what it is and for a lot of people that work perhaps in a finance sector or in an office job Mondays tend to be filled with meetings or other important things that kind of dictate that time and therefore Monday kind of flashes by it's Tuesday where the realization of the week kind of sets in for me and then it's Wednesday and you're halfway there and then Thursday is just Friday's Friday, and then Friday is the weekend. So that that's genuinely how I see my week. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that whole concept of actually how you sort of. It's, so, so does that mean it goes really quick? Things it sounds like it really goes. Your week goes really quick because of that, because of the way you've described it, which is good and bad. Because when I'm living it, it makes getting to the weekend a breeze. But then six <laughs> months flies by, and I'm like, oh crap! What have I done with my life? <laughs> yeah, it flies, doesn't it? Yeah. No, I think because really, because that's really interesting because like I love I love the perspective of this because we're all at different sort of decades of our lives actually I, I really like that split aren't we we're sort of that split's really quite interesting to see how we do see time um, so I think that's really great in fact is you saying that I actually was um, listening to Ray Dalio um, and I've mentioned it before actually multi billionaire you have. You have. Right? multi billionaire hedge fund manager doesn't need to work anymore but he's basically just passing on his life lessons and uh, and he talks about the life arc and um he talked about you got a different phase of life you got your you got your third you got three phase of life by basically you know, you're naught to i don't know 20 30s then you got your 50s and then 50s to 50s to 60s and then 70s to 80s but there's there's you know in that first phase you've got the schooling and then the next phase is like responsibility and it's a really great arc and um and then obviously you know later on in life you, sh you know basically you're sort of came you know stepping off the pedal but things happen you start to lose friends you start to you know lose people in your life and it's a different but you can sort of appreciate a step back from life and i think it's a really really amazing thing and if you want to check it out um there's actually he's actually got an app called principles on the app store and you can just download it and you can what you can see it, it takes you it's all free and you can just download the, the principles and i think and it actually if i think it's a really good app actually like ryan said you said well, I've got through six months and I think, well, what have I done with my life? It's, it's actually a really good way to sort of see where your life is going and what's what's going on in your life right now and actually what's coming up. 
And so it's really good and it makes you sort of think about it. And I'm, I'm only just, I'm, I haven't sort of looked at it in detail, uh, but I've only recently just downloaded it. But I think it's a really good thing because if you know where you are and you know what sort of coming up, you can then sort of plan and sort of set those really sort of audacious goals for yourself. So yeah, Lisa, I've gone on a little bit there, but I think that's this is really fitting in real well with what you're saying about time and how this sort of affects people. And I think it definitely, I mean, we've, we've done the conversation before about is, you know, is 50 now what it was 20 years ago, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, possibly perspective change as you get older. And what don't we, you know, that's in the archives, people are going to go back and listen to it. But um, I do think that passage of time, it, it definitely changes on that view. Because like, and I thought there's a bit of a, an introspective bit I, I do with myself here, which is actually back to the mindfulness thing, I think helps me a lot of my mindset because, you know, we're all defined by where we come from. And as we've talked about in previous podcasts, well, you know, our history isn't always factual. It's what we remember and it's what we tell ourselves. And then we define ourselves through that and we define where we are against that. And I think for a long time, I saw that a lot of what I've been doing was a, a struggle. And it's in a struggle, I think, financially more than anything else. And, you know, it's like if people say money doesn't buy you happiness. And that's completely true. 100 percent true. But similarly, if if money is a focus for whatever reason, that consumes a lot of your time. So I don't think it necessarily makes you happy, but it can create stress and weigh your mind and whatever else. And it was a long time, I think I looked back that I'd spent a lot of time climbing a mountain. We talked about bits of this in various episodes. And I think I defined myself through it, that through the passage of time, I spent more time in that struggle. And every so often I'd pop my head up, but then I'd go back down again. It's like, oh, why did I let myself do that again? And I think I defined through that a lot and potted history, but got my first job, oh, I can get credit, got a car loan, went into debt, spent ages paying off what at the time comparatively was a lot of money for myself, finally got up there, then got with long-term partner that eventually married, we got into debt, spent a long time in that debt position, we then split up, money went through the floor, dug myself back out of the hole, just about got on top of it again, and it said, you know, that's, to myself, it's a bit of a you know, I suppose it's a bit of a negative story, even though I've still got myself out the hole. There's a lot of, oh, it's been hard work, blah, 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 blah. But then what, as I've got older, I've been able, I did this for a bit of an experiment myself, box myself, and I started this for a different reason. So it, I think we did a bit of an episode talking about, I can't remember what it was, but basically I was going to go off to box, oh, that was it, that through certain people's eyes, you could be like, oh, they're in a really good position, but you only know what you see in front of you. And I was going to come on here and tell a story about, you know, at 20, I was here, at 25 here, 30 here, 35 here. And they're all going to be a bit negative, but slightly getting better until now to kind of illustrate that me now isn't me even five years ago. And that's how quick things can change. But what I actually found out of is I checked in at 20, 25, 30, 35. They were all pretty good. And it kind of gave me a different view on my journey. But I think if you're 25, what have you got? You've got 15, 20, 20, you've got a really small boxes there where actually you probably haven't changed massively as a person. Whereas if I can do that between 20 and 40, that's a lot bigger space of time and you can box it up a lot better. And I actually looked at Nike, 20 hours in college, just come out, 25, I was in um, job. In fact, you'd have known me then, Joe. And it was more about going out for mates and stuff like that. But I... I was in that good position financially between like 21 and 24 was when I had that bip and then 25. Oh, I'm good. I'm going out with my mates. I'm at the point of moving out and building life and blah, blah, blah. And then at 30 married two kids, all was good. 35 divorced by then, but in a really amicable place with, with parents and paid off all the debt that we built up at that period and was on the verge of buying a house. And so now 40 there plan to get married again job's going well, all good with kids, blah, 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 blah. So actually, they're all really good points, but they had, you know, bits of ups and downs in between them. But I was tending to define myself more by the negatives, I think. But I think it's because of that compressed time. The longer time goes on, the more you can see those points in between and what it's built to. And I think it's, I don't know why, it's made me more positive going forward, because actually, there will be adversities that happen for whatever reason yeah i mean we all live through covid and the struggles we've got various things certainly in this country financially now but actually a lot of that could be short term and what's that going to be at 45 and 50 and 50 and it's it's given me a more positive mindset looking forward but i think part of that is because of how much i can break stuff down now into those meaningful chunks that i couldn't do before 
like imagine for you right your five-year chunks would look very different than mine now just because of you've your journey so you've far as opposed to mine that's yeah. it and i think it's a lot easier to <laughs> retrospective you know and it was just it tied in with this thing for me they tend to go with my mindset hand in hand the 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 faster passing the time but actually that you know you you whiz through the downs as much as you do the the highs during that time while before for me if i had x amount of money to pay off and that was going to be a year or a year and a half or two years that's like forever whereas now you you know you can plan more constructively on it which i know that's all a bit of a ramble but it's supposed to sound quite positive and tie into the passage of time came up with this all in the car on the way back from work today so i like it that's not true these are like all these things are they 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 kind of ferment in my mind for a little while but all times in with this mindfulness journey that my apple watch is talking to me said it didn't get that no i didn't get that but it's all part of this i say me trying to you know glass half full what are the positives you can take things where have you been trying to be more objective on my because i say i went in with a preconceived idea of what that journey would look like but as i wrote it down and was quite objective about it i'm like oh that's actually very different than so i you thought it was wrote this down yes you don't write stuff down i'm really impressed with that because you don't like journaling <laughs> but you wrote it down now you've seen the benefits of actually writing things down so here you go. You're like this, Joe. You're like this. A tie in. There was two things I was going to, you know, we do a little update sometimes, but I thought I won't do it at the start of the podcast. And I'm glad I didn't because Joe was rambling on something chronic for those that are still with us now. So little, little Lee updates for you. Number one is I have signed up and I'm actively going to the gym. That's amazing. And as a part of that, in the notes on my phone, I make a note of what I did at the gym each time I was there so I can track the progress, Joe. So there's a little bit of journaling for you there. Journaling. Oh, I there you go. Good. I thought you'd be proud of that. Good. I'm so proud right now. Uncle Joe's buzzing. Look at that. Yeah. And the second thing I talked about at the start of the year, one of my missions, tying back to my mindfulness stuff, and we did a podcast on this earlier in the year. Again, it's in the archives. I talked about wanting to become less judgmental. On the two sides, you know, like I, you know, I said about it, like I judge myself less in situations and not be like, oh, well, that went bad or they're thinking bad of me. But actually, it's a two way street that I've got to be less, less judgmental of people because then I stop thinking about people being judgmental of me. And I've talked about this on a few ones, I think, across January, February. And I was talking to my other half the other day about just stuff. And she actually, she actually pointed, she said to me, one of the things she really likes about me is how I don't judge people or I'm not judgmental. And I'd like, and that was unprompted. I'd never said to her that this was one of my my goals and stuff. And the fact that just independently, that was, I was like, oh, that's a really good checkpoint for what has been my mission that someone actually, and I don't think I'm there. I don't think I'm where I want to be. I think there's work to go. But the fact that someone said that back to me and that was consciously one of my goals for the year, I thought was quite a good, to use a bit of NLP phrasing, that was a good anchor moment for me in my my mindfulness journey. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love the fact that you know people are picking it up and they can see it. Uh, no, no, I, no. I, I think it's. Um, and I thought Joe would be up, proud of me. And the mindfulness going on still, you know, all that, and it's almost like mindfulness, like it's almost getting to that meditation part and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, sounds great to me. Um, I, I love, I love the fact that you're journaling, and and now you're not journaling actually. When Pat, you're doing, you're using something else like a phone. But it's only like little notes. I think that's pretty small. And I really, really did like that. And I thought it was really, really good. No. no so there you fine. go. There's a there's a ramble of well-being from Lee that I hope inspires other people that it's more than anything else. It's all about it's all about mindset. I think that's the biggest thing in everything is how you approach things impacts how you interpret things and how you respond to things. And it is key to everything. I think that's the same with the, the journey thing as well. It's just being really conscious of that passage of time and what that can mean and why why that is. And I, I say, I think it's all helping me with that more positive view on everything. Not that I was really negative on it before, but the more the more you can improve that, I can definitely feel that I'm a lot more relaxed as a person. I was going to ask you a question actually about, because you said the struggle and I want to sort of, you said you, said you struggled. What do you, in your view do you think having the struggle or even looking back and think i did struggle has helped you navigate your life now had you not had the struggle i suppose would you think you'd still have the same outcomes and it's hard to say for certain because you don't know it's a theoretical question but i like to think so because i think it's you know i by being irresponsible when i was younger i learned some lessons and i 
built my way out of those lessons and that's not the only reason that I've done things I've done or whatever else like that but I think it's a building block and it definitely makes me I think more grateful for things and more appreciative of you know I don't I don't take a lot for granted and it's because of a lot of it is because of that journey and having been on the the other side of the fence yeah because I think the struggle does make us stronger I think that's what you know when we have struggles we tend to have to have that pain and then we go forward and actually you know, it's funny Ray, Ray Daly talks about life's a big puzzle it's just you just try to figure it out you're going along trying to figure it out and everyone's got their own set of puzzles and I call them problems it's a very similar concept that the problems are there for you to solve for you to become better at what you do and if you ignore them the same problem just comes up it just dresses up in different clothes he calls he calls it something that just turns up it's, it's oh it's the same thing again, just in different disguise um, yeah so you know if you didn't address the debt you know, it would still get worse or yeah. if you tried to, you know, it would just turn up. It, it won't go away until you face it. So this thing of, and again, one of the things I want to say, and I think one of the things you did say about how you went through the phase and you look back now, and you know, it went quickly or, you know, and, and you solve those problems, you look back more positively. And, and there's that um, quote, I think it's from the Buddha, isn't it? That this too will pass, you know, whether you're having these highs or lows, it, you will go through those ups and downs. Um, and at the minute I'm going through quite a, a difficult change at the minute i've got something really quite challenging coming up and i felt quite emotional and i did um and so well, yeah the thing you're talking about about not letting the emotion take over and i actually did let the emotion take over me a little bit and i've had to sort of step back i've had to get back into my meditation quite heavily to try and cope with that because it's been quite difficult so um so i meditated i'm doing this sixth phase six phase meditation it's done by this guy called uh he does mind valley his name now but he's, he's a really famous guy anyway it's like a transcendental meditation ray dalio swears by um, meditation because it decharges your emotions and makes you think more logically so um anyway i just wanted to share that because i think thinking about your struggles and what you've dealt with you know and i've had struggles but there's there's another one coming but i know it will pass i know i'll get through it it's just i've got to go through it and i've got to just meet it head on and deal with it and i'm um, hearing your story and hearing what you're saying it gives me courage to just face it and just face it down. Again, with the meditation, again, it's, I mean, just the courage to go into it and just see what happens with it and go from there. But yeah, no, that's I good. Thank really you good. for sharing on that. I watched one of my favourite inspirational films the other day, which is someone who's controversial, and it's not a debate I really want to get into. It's someone I see spiritual things in. It's called Darkest Hour, and it's about Churchill and for, uh, the Second World War. And at the end, it puts up one of his quotes, which is I'll butcher the word in, but it's done on the lines of success isn't final failure isn't fatal it's the courage to carry on that is strength or well, something along those lines which is like you're saying there is and it's it's for both ends the highs will stop being highs and the lows will stop being lows and you you've got you know you've got to know both courage when it's low and humility when it's high so that you you come well, out like of them in the best courage position when it's low humility when it's high because you can easily become that thing oh i've got it sussed i'm there you know and the ego thing doesn't it and you know when you're low it's that whole thing i'm never going to do it see i really love that courage when you're low humility when you're high i really love that by the way that should be that should be a saying on one of the t-shirts i really like that hashtag lee kemp original yeah i like that are you ryan you've been have you you've been quite quiet reflecting <clears> and i want you to, what, <clears> what are your thoughts on any of that because it's yeah what your i struggle with time to be honest i just i don't know i can't help but i've reached that age now where i can't help but feel there's no going back right um, if it helps you feel any better that feeling only gets worse the older you get yeah <laughs> and there's just this sense of impending doom what's that what do you mean impending doom what, what... i don't really know how to explain it it, it, it just feels like it, it feels like i don't know i feel like that my no matter what my best days are already behind me right and there's there's always this there's, there's this cynical part of me that thinks, um, and this is really cynical, that there's a total number of days you're going to live for as soon as you're born and you're just counting those days down every day that you live. Your heart has a has a, has a a beat counter on it and it's going down from 100 million or whatever it is and it's got a certain number left. And I can't help but feel that that time's escaping us. You know? That's where my impending doom comes from. Sometimes I have these existential crises like this and um, I get in get in my what i what the kids say i get in my feelings about it but generally i just i just try and do what i enjoy as much as possible and that kind of at least lets me feel that i've done what i've wanted to do you know i think that's a good approach ryan i've i've felt that before i, I it probably wasn't till mid to late 30s i started becoming aware of that that feeling so later than for you perhaps you'll but live 10 years longer than me then who knows me <laughs> <laughs> but that's where i think the mindfulness stuff that's part of the reason i really like that mm. because it is as as a uh 
a good friend of mine, Jose Neuer, likes to say, it's about the journey, not the destination. And I think that impending doom is really focused on the destination. Whereas if you if you can draw yourself back from that and be in the moment, it really, I think it kind of, it must be human nature to have that feeling, but that really helps with that. Oh yeah, of course. I don't sit there and struggle struggle every day and things like that. It's, it's only when I when I sit and actually think about it in a in a deeper fashion that it um yeah that it kind of strikes me a bit, you know. But as you say, it only gets worse, right? So once once maybe I've reached a good destination, then things will start to change, you know. Once once I've properly got goals set and and how that looks, that might that might change my perspective of it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think if you can set those goals that you want. That's definitely going to give you some more purpose to to what you want to do, and uh, yeah, and I think and it's really interesting you're saying that about that thought about you know, you know, my heart beating up, one more heartbeat is one less, and we are when we're born, that's that that's the case, you know, when we're born, that's the case, you know, we are there is going to be that end. I, I don't know where I got it from, but there was this whole thing around, you know, we if we look at like, if we look at the future, we can be anxious, and if we look too much at the past, we can be depressed, and that's why that present moment so important what lee talks about mindfulness and talks about and i talk about meditation and it's like you know real high performers like tom billiu you know ray dalio these are big big performers these these are really successful guys absolutely do this stuff um, and i've got to admit it really does help me and i haven't been doing it lately and i think that's another reason why i might be feeling a little bit you know a little bit like right like what you said about that in Oh, I'm a bit, I'm a bit anxious about what's going to be happening, um, because of what I've let. I think I've personally, I think what I've done, I've let my emotional brain take over a little bit and and actually feed in that cortisol, which is that's what I've got me on for, and I'm now recognising that. So I've started two days ago, really going deeper, much more meditation, meditation every night. Ryan, I yeah, I totally feel, and I think what you said about goals and 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 what Lee said about. It is that journey piece. It's not about that end thing. It's about what are you enjoying now? When you said, I enjoy these things, those things we enjoy, but whatever the goals you set, you should be enjoying the thing that you're doing to get to that goal. Because, you know, we set massive audacious goals, right? But they're not guaranteed. They're not guaranteed. We want Inspiration Nation to go like, do we want it to, to go, you know, we want to go and do uh, lives, go out there and, you know, maybe do a tour. We don't know if it's going to happen, but what we can do is enjoy the journey of these conversations in these moments and who knows that's a goal but i'd love for it to happen but it doesn't mean it's, it may it may not happen who knows but we can enjoy that journey from now because we're doing it every week we're up you know you're doing your bits ryan lee lee's doing his bits i'm doing my bits and together on this journey i, I love these conversations every week i look forward to having a conversation with you guys and we have this really deep conversation about what's going on and i think for me those are those present moments and that we can sort of in bed and have those large audaces go. But like you say, I reckon you're right, Ryan. It's those moments. To want, am I enjoying what I'm doing? And if yeah. we're not, if we're not enjoying it, what do we need to change? And I think you said that a goal setting will, will help you shift that. But no, I really like what you said there, Ryan. I did. It's really powerful. That's my takeaway now. I'm having that as a takeaway. That's good because we're at a point that in the sh- at that point in the show, the countdown time is on. So I'm going to rein back in the cats, herd them in. <laughs> Thank you for your takeaway. Ryan, what is your takeaway from today? It, time is what you make it, right? Do what you need to with it. Mine is that Joe is significantly older than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's I enjoy- and I know I reference this on a lot of shows, but it is something I, I focus on. It's, it's just that enjoy the moment. And it's, there's a difference between, between being reckless and just being like, ah, I'm going to spend all my money because there is no tomorrow and enjoying what you're doing in the moment. And that's what that live like there is no tomorrow thing is. It's just, you know, you have got a plan for the future, but you don't, you know, don't obsess over it. So live yeah. in the moment. That's my that's my good one there. Really like that. Love that. No, it's been good, guys. Enjoyed that. Right. So... Thank you, everyone, again out there at Listen to IN, Listen to OIN. If you want to catch up with Joe, just put Jose Noya Inspiration Nation into your Google machine. He is everywhere. Follow him on TikTok. Jay Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation on his mission to 10,000 followers. He is on there every day. Great inspirational content. And you can head over to inspirationnation.org.uk to sign up for the newsletter, view the archive, see the coaching service, and most importantly, buy yourself some merch. Supports what we are doing over here and we appreciate it. Joe is wearing a t-shirt. Here's a mug for the screen. All good stuff. Looks like I've blurred it for a sense of 
<laughs> if I hold it in the right it's spot, the you can see mug. it. It's the rude YouTube. mug. <laughs> Wherever you are, podcast players, YouTube, um, anywhere else, leave us a review, hit subscribe, hit that five star button, tell friends and family that is the way we grow. And we appreciate the support. There's a few people again trawling through the archives. If you are going back, downloading a block to review, we very much appreciate you and we'd love to hear your feedback on the show. I'm All that's left for me to do is to count us down and we'll be back next week. Three, yep. two, one. Inspiration, Inspiration Nation. Nation. Catch you guys later. 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 Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building i appreciate you so until next time i'll see you in the next video inspiration nation and i'll catch you guys later